Hi, I'm Taylor of Taylor and Crochet and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to prep for a market when you don't have a lot of time, when you aren't sure what kind of things to prep, um, all of those kinds of things because I've had a lot of questions, especially in the Ash and Tay Facebook group about um, people signing up for markets last minute and not having a lot of stock or not knowing what kind of stock to bring or what stock to focus on for their markets. Um, so I kind of have like a little plan that I started following when I started doing my market prep. Um, there's one part of this plan that I didn't follow and I'm going to tell you <laughs> why that was a mistake and why I think you should stick to this part of the plan. Um, but I, hopefully this will help you guys with any of your market prep, even if it's your first market, your 10th market, whatever it may be. Um, hoping that these tips and guidelines will help you guys um, have been peace of mind during market prep because I know it can be crazy before a market and scary, but um, it's really fun when you get there. Um, it's a lot of work beforehand, but um, hopefully this will ease your fears. If you ever feel like you don't have enough stock, trust me, every person before every market feels that way. It doesn't matter if I bring one tub of stock or 10 tubs of stock, I always feel like I don't have enough. Um, but even if you just have 20 pieces, 10 pieces, um, you can make that work with a display. So don't, do not stress about it. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe. I talk a lot about craft markets. I talk a lot about blogging and business. And then I also do crochet tutorials and addy tutorials. So if any of those things sound like stuff you guys want to learn about, then definitely subscribe. Um, but let's get on to the tips that I have. So when it comes to choosing what kinds of items you want to make, um, the best advice I can give is to choose patterns to make that are super quick makes. Um, you want stuff that works up really quickly. The longer it takes, uh, the less of those items you're going to be able to make and the more you're going to have to charge for those items. If you do quick makes, that usually means you can make them quickly, which means your labor time, like the charge that you have for that time, will be less and then you can have some lower priced items on your table. Uh, that's the hardest thing about markets is sometimes people feel like your prices are too steep, too low, um, you don't want to underprice or overprice other crochet or knitwear people at your market. Um, I always kind of put my blinders on and just focus on me and what's right for me and my customers. Um, but I have found the items that I can make in an hour or less tend to be my most profitable patterns and make me have more time to have the most amount of stock. So I, those are the patterns I like to focus on. Um, I have a lot of like sweater patterns, summer top patterns. Um, I have a scarf pattern, an infinity scarf pattern, which is a really, really great pattern for markets. I think those take me about an hour. My rover bag takes me 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. And then my Addy twist hats and headbands are both like an hour or less. Addy pumpkins, an hour or less. Um, those are all really great patterns. And then Ashley, obviously, of A Crafty Concept, her blog is full of quick patterns, which is really, really awesome. Um, towel toppers on my blog I have which are like the little hanging towels and then scrunchies from Molly of White Owl Crochet Co is another really quick 15 minute pattern. Um, really quick makes are really really perfect for market. So those are just a lot of examples, a lot of different ones. All of Ashley's bun beanies, closed top beanies, all perfect for this. Um, so those are the types of patterns you want to select from. So right off the bat, if you're starting with zero stock, my advice is to choose, like I said, a quick pattern and then also choose patterns that have low material cost. Um, I've been using Hobby Lobby, I love this yarn, a ton lately. I've heard that Bernat Blanket Saver or Bernat Saver, I'm not sure which one it's called, I'll look it up for you guys. Um, I've heard that is a comparable substitute as well for like price wise and quality wise and then um, paint box yarns from um, Lovecrafts. Uh, I'll try and link those below if I can so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But I've heard that that was a comparable substitute for Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn as well. Um, that is like I can make two hats or two um, headbands. I can make boot cuffs with those. There's quite a different things. I can use, a t use that same yarn for quite a few different patterns. Um, and then yarns like Karen Simply Soft is a really cost of like affordable yarn. 
Um, if you want to move a little bit higher than, then like Lion Brand Woolies is like a good wool blend yarn that is like pretty cost effective. Um, but just keep the price of your materials in mind as well because our point of doing markets is to make money. Um, so if we do yarn that costs $15 a skein um, and our customer base is only willing to pay $30 for a scarf and it took you an hour to make, like you're only making $15. Um, but if that same scarf only costs you five dollars in materials, then you're gonna make twenty five dollars versus fifteen for the same amount of work. So that's just something you want to keep in mind as well. Um, and then my last piece of advice when it comes to picking your yarns, picking your stuff, picking your colors is stick with neutral colors. Um, I will put a picture right here of my Bonfire Beanie table, uh, what my previous markets have looked like. I used so much color. Um, Karen Simply Soft was a yarn I worked with for a really long time. Love Karen Simply Soft. And it comes in like a hundred colors. And I swear I've made a hat in every single one of those colors. And it looked really cute in my display. I love looking at them all. I love wearing a lot of them. But it overwhelmed my customers. My customers would come in and be like, ooh, I like this purple one. I like this orange one. I like this pink one. Uh, they liked all of them so much that they couldn't decide which one to get, so they got none of them. Um, you really, really, really do not want to overwhelm your customers. And um, neutrals sell better. Honestly, my neutrals sell best every single time. I've talked to other people who do markets, usually the same thing. There are a few people who live in a few areas that like their bright colors sell best, but like where I live in Michigan, neutral colors have sold like consistently time after time after time at markets. Um, so those would be like whites, blacks, grays, creams, tans, um, anything that's that basic neutral color palette that can kind of match their coats that they wear, can match their boots, can match with like multiple outfits. Those are the colors you want to stick with. I do put in pops of like trending colors so like moth pink was doing really well, mustard yellow, and then like burnt orange are all three colors that have done really, really well. So I've added those, I've sprinkled those in, but if I only had a limited time, I would start with all neutral colors um, because those will sell best and those will be like the best use of your time. So I'm gonna bring you guys through my process now. So if I were starting all over again and this was my very first market, whether I had one week to prep, two weeks to prep, a year to prep, this is how I would start my prep of my stock. So the first thing I would do was I would find three patterns, three patterns that I like. I would find a, like a palm hat, a uh, non-pom hat and a scarf. Those are just three examples. You don't have to use those three patterns if it's not cold weather where you are. Maybe you'll do a wall hanging, a towel topper, and a scrunchie. Um, no matter what your three patterns are, I just, starting with three, basic three, um, that are cohesive together, or maybe you do like a hat, a headband, and um, a scarf. But for this example, I'm gonna do a pom beanie, a hat, and a scarf. So I pick those three patterns. I find patterns that um, use both of my palm beanies are going to use Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. Maybe my scarf will, or maybe I'm going to upgrade to a bulkier yarn um, for my scarf, but I'm still going to keep it in the same color palette as my other ones. So I have my three patterns. They all take me less than an hour to make, at least less than two hours to make for all three of these. Um, and then in each hat, in each palm beanie, in each scarf, I'm going to make one of three different colors. I'm gonna choose three colors. So my colors are gonna be tan, gray, and white. So I'm gonna make one palm beanie in tan, gray, and white, one hat in tan, gray, and white, and one scarf in tan, gray, and white. Um, and so at that point, you'll have nine items in your stock. Your three, or sorry, your nine items will be cohesive in color. They'll look really great when you display them. Um, that's enough to fill up a table. If you have like a six foot table or eight foot table, between that and your crates and your, you know, little checkout area, that is enough to fill a table. If that's all you had, you know, you could say that, you know, that is enough. You would look visually full when you went to a market. You'd probably sell out really quick. Um, but if that's all you had, if it was just a market that was like a three or four hour market, that would be okay. Um, once you've done that, if you have more time, if you have more time, I would go back and make a second set of the same things. 
So now you're gonna have two tan pom beanies, two gray pom beanies, two white pom beanies. Um, and then you're gonna have two of each of those colors of your regular hats and your scarves as well. So at this point, you have 18 items. You now have 18 items. I'm gonna pop up a little picture right here so you can see what 18 items looks like. That is quite a lot. If you had that for a four hour market and you just had a table set up, that is plenty. Um, that one can get you through maybe even a regular booth setup, depending on what your props and tables are. Um, but that is a really, really, really good start. If you can get two sets of all of these colors for your three patterns, like I think like you are ready to go for a market. Um, like, like I said, no matter how much or how little stock you have, you will always feel like you don't have enough. But I really, really, really think that's a great starting off point um, for any market to begin with, especially if you just have a table set up. Um, and then if you did three of each of those things, then you'd have three tan palm beanies, three gray palm beanies, three white palm beanies, three tan scarves, three gray scarves, three white scarves, so on and so forth. So you'd have 27 items in stock. So that's 27 hours of work that you have put in. So if you can carve out 27 hours, I know I work full time, I go to school, I'm really busy, market prep is really, really hard. Um, but, you know, if you, if you start early, you'll always have plenty of time. Um, if not, if you can just do like two hours a night, two hours a night for two weeks. Oh man, what's that math? <laughs> That's 28 hours. <laughs> if you can do two hours every single night for two weeks, you'll have time to make your 27 items. And this is what 27 items looks like. So 27 items is a lot of stuff, you guys. Um, and then at this point, let's just say you still have more time to prep and you want to diversify um, or grow on beyond these base 27 items you have. You could choose to do a fourth color and do two to three of this fourth color. Maybe that's where you want to add your pop of color, your mauve pink, your mustard yellow, your burnt orange, or whatever color is trending in your area. Um, this would be a really, really, really great time to add on that fourth color. Um, if you don't want to necessarily jump into a fourth color, you can jump into another pattern. So you can do a fourth pattern. Um, if you don't have a ton of time, I would suggest something small like scrunchies. I use Molly of White Owl Crochet Co's scrunchie pattern. Um, I've been using her scrunchie pattern for like two years, love her pattern. Um, the great thing about scrunchies is they're one of those things that you don't have to stick to neutral colors. If you want to go color crazy on scrunchies, this, like, that's your time to do it. I know it's so hard to walk down the yarn aisle and not just leap at all these beautiful colors because they are so pretty, but trust me, neutrals will sell best. They'll look best in your display. Um, they will bring you the most income. So if you're going to a market and your plan is to make a lot of money, trust me stick with neutrals but scrunchies go crazy go wild get yellows get pinks get bright reds oranges whatever any color in scrunchies seem to sell well um like seriously my scrunchies have always done consistently well every single market um and they're 15 minutes so you can make four in an hour i personally sell mine six dollars each or two for ten at my last market i sold like 30 scrunchies so i think that it's that price is doable for me in my area. I I have had like a market or two, like a, a spring market where scrunchies didn't sell well. Um, I don't do spring markets anymore because spring markets in general for me do not sell well. Um, but I've had really good luck with scrunchies. Uh, I know some people sell them for like $3 each. It just depends on what it's worth to you. I just know that if I can make four scrunchies in an hour and I sell them two for 10 or $6 each, which most people honestly buy two of them when I do two for 10. So that's like $20 for an hour's worth of work minus the $5 in materials that it takes. Probably doesn't even take $5 in materials, but I'm at least profiting $15 for my hour's worth of work. And that's kind of what I like to say, at least $15 I like to get for my makes. Um, so maybe you can keep that in mind when you do your pricing. Maybe you wanna make $20 an hour or 25, whatever your area thinks that you can keep up with that price. I say go for it. If you can sell a beanie for $50, $60, $70 in your area, I totally, totally, totally suggest that you price it that way. Um, just in my local markets, my prices usually tend to be between $20 and $40 for scarves and hats. Um, but yeah, so I hope that this gave you a really good jumping off point for your market prep. 
Um, I wish that I could have told myself this two years ago when I started markets because like I said, I still have a ton of colorful beanies and other items in stock. Um, if you guys have seen my market videos you've probably seen just like super bright colors crazy colors um i've been working on moving my color palette into a more neutral color palette so um my colors don't i guess they're not as in your face anymore because they're surrounded by a bunch of other neutral colors um, but i'm still trying to get rid of that colorful stock so trust me <laughs> um don't make the mistake i did stick with the neutral colors you'll you'll thank me later um but yeah so i guess if you guys have done markets and you've used a similar system to this, let me know how it goes. I would love to see your guys' setups. I'd love to see like how your guys' markets have been going for you. Um, I'm on Instagram. You guys can find me at Taylor Lynn Crochet on Instagram. And then also on the Ash and Tay Facebook group, if you guys are looking for a really positive, uplifting crochet community, um, you should be in the Ash and Tay Facebook group. Me and Ashley created this group because we wanted, we were always looking for groups that we could self-promote our products, our blog posts, our patterns, whatever it may be, without any stipulations. A lot of places you can't self-promote or you, you can, but you can't share a link unless someone asks and all these weird rules. Um, we just wanted to kind of get rid of all of that and just have a place where everyone could share and, you know, grow your business with other makers. Um, and also find advice and help when you need it. So it's a really, really great place if you have any questions like, you know, what neutral colors to pick, what markets are in your area. Um, maybe you'll find someone on the Ash and Tate Facebook group who can help you out. If you have any business questions, blogging questions, everyone's super kind and super helpful in this group. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, definitely check it out. Uh, if you think I missed anything in this video, if you have any more questions, definitely leave a comment below and I will get back to that. Um, if you guys have ever done a market and you wish that you had this system, definitely tell me that below too because I know I did. I I'm kind of interested in what people's systems kind of are. Um, but yeah, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. But I will catch you guys next time and good luck to you in market prep and market season and all of that stuff that goes along with this crazy awesome hobby. But bye guys. Bye.